Chapter 2, The Crown. Nice, we're gonna get to see some Ezrin. Ezrin as king. This is crazy. Little Ezrin. I don't know if I'm ready for this bait. You're more ready than a lot of people. More ready than Varen. <gasps> Finally, like an actual Zadia. <laughs> this is crazy, Rayla. Everything here radiates with primal energy. Yep, that's Zadia. You are kidding me! Magic dirt? What? <laughs> Save some of that googly-eyed amazement for later. I feel like Helm's doing that thing when you travel to a new land. You're in the airport and you're like, everything's so different here. And you haven't even gotten into the country yet. Or like you go to a tourist attraction and you start taking all these pictures like right at the gate. Man, I miss traveling. He's in for some rude awakenings, for sure. Like the elves are not gonna be so kind to him, I don't think. But he's got the right attitude. Like this is the attitude you need to have when you're traveling to a new place. You need to love it. That's how I felt when I went to Korea and I had a wonderful time. It's just like the energy I had going in never left. And I think part of that was that it was meaningful to me. I was like working things out for myself. And Callum is working magic out for himself and more. You're home now, Zim. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. Might as well. Give these guys a raise. Uh-oh. This is the real danger of Ezra and his king. May I offer his majesty <laughs> a freshly baked jelly tart? The king requests a tart of jelly. Of course. May I have another? The king requests another tart of jelly. You don't have to repeat everything I say. <laughs> the king requests that you stop repeating. Uh... Yeah, it's gonna take some getting used to. All packed for your journey to the throne. <laughs> Would you like a tart of jelly? No, thanks. Don't worry, we can have as many as we want. I wasn't worried. <laughs> All right. High council meetings are attended by the council itself and necessary security and no others. Unless specifically requested by the king. Well, oh, yeah. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to request Corvus to come. Specifically. I'm glad he's, you know, he's asking for what he wants. That's good. Well, what do we do now? The first order of business is to review messages received by the kingdom. Crow Lord? He's just gonna have to, like, clean up all of Viren's mess. Crow Lord! Sorry, um, the Crow Lord isn't here. He's taking a personal day. Where is the Crow Lord is never around? Bosses, am I right? I wonder what the risks are for Ezrin here. I mean, the obvious ones are that he's just young. Um, he's inexperienced. He has a lot of responsibility now that's on his shoulders. And he's also a kind-hearted person like Harrow. So you can see that that would create some challenges. Another challenge that I could possibly see for Ezrin is just that he's very humble. And I feel like having anything he wants all the time could have a corruptive influence, especially as a kid. It plays music! Yep, it's a melodaisy. <laughs> Go ahead. Stop and smell this one. <laughs> what was that? Some call them flatulilies, tootlips, peristinkles. They go by many names, but at the end of the day, it's a fart flower. Zim, no! <laughs> you didn't have to smell them. That's on you. Assassins. What? There have been attacks in other kingdoms. Successful attacks. Oh, yeah, right. Virin's King Florian dark magic. and Queen Farida are dead. Oof. It appears that Zadia is waging war mm. on all of humanity. Right. And Erevos was telling Virin, like, don't worry, you set things in motion. Here it is, right? We've arrested two traitors. We need the king's judgment immediately. <gasps> <gasps> there they are. It's good that Claudia and Ezrin, Ezrin had that conversation. They're Lord Viren's children. So what? The High Mage is in prison for treason. And? When Dad sent us after the princes- Viren sent you after the princes? He wanted us to rescue the princes, not kill them! Kill them? Who said anything about killing the princes? Claudia, you need to get a lawyer ASAP. <laughs> Tell them we didn't do anything wrong. Wow. Give the order. You need to make a decision. Lady, stop it. 
I don't like that Ezra's being pressured into this. You can't just release them. Fine, fine. Keep the chains on. Until I can make up my mind. I'm sorry. Come on, Ezra, and have some confidence. I'm sorry. Oh no, he's slowly being defeated <laughs> by the role. He'll be all right, he'll be all right. We're prisoners in our own home. Well, at least we have bread. Oh, at least this one's edible. Dad wanted me to kill the princes. That means we're guilty. But there's no way Dad would tell you to do that. No, no, she's in denial. Dad's in prison, and everyone's telling Ezrin we're guilty too. Ezrin thinks for himself. He'll see through this mess, and he'll do the right thing. Yeah, you would hope. Soren's had this, like, zen awakening or whatever. He's so chill. I feel like the, the whole experience was a net positive for Soren and his character. But it's not complete, right? It's like Soren's pendulum. He was way too brash and unthinking. Now he's just sort of, like, defeated, unsure. There's a beautiful Soren that could be had, right? There's, like, brave, strong Soren who's, like, a capable fighter who has connected it to something meaningful and connected it to values. As it stands right now, everything he was connected to has sort of crumbled apart. His dad's in jail. He's acknowledged the fact that what his dad told him to do was horrible. And he got pretty banged up by the dragon and almost lost his walking ability forever. But there's so much goodness that he could connect to, you know? Claudia, meanwhile, I feel like is farther behind in that scale because she's still clinging to the old way. She hasn't allowed herself to, like, melt down. I think sometimes you need to just let go and experience the pain and then regroup. And I think that's part of the natural transition of life. You gotta be able to sacrifice your beliefs a little bit about your world and like yourself and stuff. And I think that the magic was a good metaphor for that. She'll go deeper. She'll go deeper and deeper. Like Viren. Viren's all in at this point. He has this very rigid set of beliefs about doing what's right for the kingdom. So much so that he allows himself to be tempted by the dark side and that led to Erebos. And there's sort of no going back for him. There is going back for Claudia, maybe. And that's sort of the, the fun of her character right now is that she's kind of like at a teetering point. So we'll see. Why are you stacking the bread like that? It's a bread sandwich. <gasps> May as well enjoy it, right? Prince Kasif of Neolandia. Everybody wants a piece of Ezrin today. Thank you for your condolences. And the tragedy of your father's loss breaks my heart. But the important thing is that we are here, now. Yes, I'm happy to meet you. Do kings not shake hands? Okay. There must be a proportionate response. War. The people of the human kingdoms and Zadia want peace. Nice. There you go, Ezrin. Why is the child on the throne now? This again? <laughs> that old chestnut. And you have failed as a son. You are in the court of King Ezrin. Who are you to interrupt a royal discussion? I'm Corvus. <laughs> I was specifically yeah. requested. He was. I will remain in Catalus, awaiting your decision. Yeah, that's the face. That's the face I want. Resolve. I can already tell I would not want to live in Zadia. It just seems so complicated. Like, this is how you get around. Also, I'm not really a huge fan of botany. Uh, are you sure this is safe? You don't have stairs or... An elevator. You gotta ride fruit. I don't know, that looks fun though. Might as well enjoy it. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean to. It's okay. It was a bumpy ride. Yeah, we're doing this, huh? Can elves of humans have kids? <laughs> There's no shame if you aren't yet ready. There may be a way out. What? There are capable people around you who can take up the burden <sighs> of ruling for a few years while you just focus on growing up. Hmm. You choose who it is, for a few years. Just think about it. All right, I know this is cynical. I'm sure that some part of that is well-intentioned. It's not a bad thing as just a suggestion, right? But why do I feel like this lady has more in common with Viren than, than she thinks? This is a little bit of a power play, no? I mean, she's not exactly saying to pick her. She might actually be genuinely saying that Ezrin should pick someone he wants, but I feel like it's implied that it's her. No, that's a danger for Ezra, and everyone's going to want something from him now. And everyone's going to see him as weak and look to exploit him. And he is really nice. He might have to learn to be a little bit more cold, like cutthroat. We made it just in time. So, what did you want to show me? Is it going to be romantic? Some kind of heart flower? What is it? 
It's an Adora bird. They're so cute. That look suits you. <gasps> hey, these things come off, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, meanwhile, while they're playing in this field of pinecos, Ezra's over here doing some hard work. Fun episode for Callum and Rayla. It's an interesting contrast. <laughs> I'm just a kid. I haven't fought in any battles. I haven't read many books of wisdom. I haven't gone through the things that made my father the king he was. So I've decided that I don't have to be the king my father was. Nice. My father made choices to keep fighting battles that started hundreds of years before he was born. To punish enemies for crimes their parents committed. I don't want to be that kind of king. Set them free. Yes! So Claudia will not pay for the mistakes their father made. Hell yeah. But your highness, Break the cycle. They're criminals. Shut up. <laughs> we can choose peace. Nice. Ezra's stock is soaring right now. It's perfect. If if this is actually what he decides, and if he can hold on to this commitment, this is kind of the realization of what Harrow wanted, right? Harrow was this person at heart, but caved to pressure of being a king. And the message he was trying to pass on to his sons was that they can create their own futures and that they can they can create their own narrative for history, let's say. And so even though in the speech, Ezra is sort of separating himself from his father, I feel like actually this is an extension of Harrow. He's not outside of the chain of events. So in a way, this is a success for Harrow. You know, I'm sure Harrow would be really proud of this. So it makes me really happy to see that. It's a beautiful thing. Now, just practically speaking, I think there's a couple good things and bad things here. One possible good thing from this is I think that he just got a lot of points with Claudia and Soren obviously. And on the risk side, the amount of smugness in this room as Ezra was talking when they thought they were going to get their way, like this guy, the prince or whatever, the advisor, they're like, hmm. Hmm. And then when he said that, there, you know, horror, just pure horror, that is a danger. He's going to have to clean house a little bit, I think. I'm kind of glad that they did this because that is such a thing. You know, like no matter how good you think you are, no matter how pure you think you are, you don't know how you'll be motivated until you actually have a, a chance at something, you know? Like if you're this close to the throne, the wheels start turning, you know? I'm not that far away from being the leader of Catalis. It's rare. It's rare that anybody can actually be immune to that effect. In fact, I feel like in order to actually be immune to it, you have to practice resisting it. You can't really think yourself virtuous. You actually have to act virtuous and practice being virtuous over time to build it. I think there's something like muscle memory when it comes to morality, but most people don't have the training because, you know, how many people are in the situation where they can grab power like this? We don't have the chance to build the immunity through action. And so all these people are sort of a threat to Ezra in that way, if that makes sense. You've made a semi-powerful enemy. Peace will require just as much strength as war. Are you prepared to defend it? Yes. Put that crown on. <laughs> looking I good, am. looking good. Nice. Yes! Well, that gave me everything I wanted. He's ready. I've always known. I've always believed. <laughs> If I was there, Ezra would have made me regent, though. One really weird thing about this episode is, like, on the one hand, you have this, like, heavy, beautiful thing with Ezra and tackling real challenges and trying to feel out the people around him, rising to his role, honoring the legacy of King Harrow, and then you have, like, Callum and Rayla playing with fart flowers. <laughs> it's, like, so different. It's good that Callum got to enjoy some of it, right? Like, it's been this crazy, difficult journey full of peril and dragons and dark magic and people trying to kill them. Take a vacation, I guess. Might as well enjoy it. But it was just weird to watch. <laughs> Flying on leaves, helicopter leaves and stuff. Ezrin is not out of the woods yet. He's accepted the role, which is really great. Whatever you're gonna do, you may as well commit to it. You may as well try to do it to the best of your ability. If he had spent five years or five seasons or whatever thinking, am I the right guy for the job? Uh, you know, it would have been very unsatisfying and it would have made, a, made him a weak ruler. It doesn't mean he'll always make the right choices, but at least in his heart he's committed to doing the right thing and i think that will go a very long way but there are challenges right he made an enemy of this guy orin alin whatever and then his advisors don't seem that loyal if i'm ezra I'm, I'm clearing house although maybe there's something to be said for trying to get the most out of the people you know maybe he can bring him around they just need time with him to see how good he is the other risk for ezra is just the never-ending supply of jelly tarts i mean i feel like that's just not healthy but anyway that's the end of episode two i'll see you guys very soon for season three episode three